Hello guys and welcome back to my channel technical interview and today we are gonna discuss one of the most important topic for technical interview and that is system design. System design is one of the crucial round of technical interview if you are going for any product based company such as Microsoft, Uber, Facebook etc. Because most engineers struggles with this system design round mainly because of two reasons. Number one because of lack of experience in developing large scale system and number two most of the engineers who have some experience building such systems are not comfortable with this type of interviews due to the fact that this is totally an open-ended designing question where there is no proper or standard answer to the problem statement and that is the reason you need to have a thorough and a deep understanding of each and every component of the system design principle so that you can ask proper requirement question for the system to your interviewer because this round is basically a collaborative round of solving the problem where you have to think that the interviewer is your client and you have to ask meaningful requirement question about the system that you want to design for example the interviewer will throw an open-ended question like design a uber app without giving the proper clarification of the problem statement so it becomes a collaborative approach between you and the interviewer to list down all the requirement that is needed for designing the system and then from there after getting all the requirement you need to approach further for solving the problem. So without having the in-depth knowledge of system designing it will be very hard for you to ask relevant questions during the interview. Because I have seen with my experience that during the interview process most of the candidates try to elaborate or design the system without asking proper requirement question and they try to start designing the system and explaining the concept of designing just by using some of the buzz terminologies of system design like load balancing, caching, SQL or non-SQL database and all this thing without knowing the basic principle and the basic funda of each and every terminologies over here. So to properly answer a system designing question, you need to have a clear and a thorough idea of all these 10 topics to design a system. Because for example, without knowing that what a load balancer actually does, you cannot answer that why you need that load balancer within the system. And if you do not know what and why, you cannot also answer properly that where you need to implement that load balancer within your design. So you need to clearly understand this what, why and where of all this key concept of system design. So in this complete video tutorial series, I will be explaining each and every key concept of system designing in proper modular video so that it will be easy for you to understand each and every topic in depth so that at the end we can merge all of this concept together to build our system properly. So I will highly recommend you if you do not have a complete knowledge of this key terminologies of system designing look forward for my next videos where I will be explaining each and every concept. But before understanding all this key concept of system designing you first need to understand the characteristic of a distributed system. Why actually we need all this MongoDB and all this database structure like this to make a distributed system. So once you are clear with the proper structure of a distributed system, then we can go in depth of all this caching policies, load balancing, data partitioning and everything. So that on a whole it will be easy for you to understand and design a complete system during your interview session. Because I have seen that during the preparation of this system design round, candidates directly jump on to the solution of designing Uber or any big application without knowing the key concept of the system design. So it is highly recommend to know each and every fundamentals of the designing so that it will be easy for you to design the entire system. So let's start with today's topic of understanding the characteristic of distributed system. So the first characteristic that we need to know before designing a system is scalability of a distributed system which can be considered as one of the most important concept that you need to focus on before designing the system. So the scalability of a system can be defined as the capability of the system or a network to grow and manage with increasing demand. Which means that while designing the system, you have to design it in such a way that your system does not break with increasing number of traffic. So if we take as an example of non-scalable system design, we can take the example of Flipkart. So what happened in 2014, during a flash sale of MI and OnePlus phones, at that time the Flipkart website crashed because of the unexpected number of load that came into their website. So that was an example of non-scaled system design. 
So another common example of non-scalable design is most of our college websites. So you must be knowing that on the day of the result, on most of the time, the website crashes. This is because of the fact the website is encountering a huge number of traffic that it can actually withstand. So while designing the system, you should consider this point that your system should be robust enough to handle those number of traffic at any point of time. So the question is how we can make our system scalable. So a simple solution to this problem is like we can increase the hardware capability of our server. So for example, we are hosting an ordinary website in a server which can handle a traffic of 10,000 customers. But at some point of time, 20,000 customers came to your website and at that time, your website will crash. So we need to upgrade our processor or server so that our processor is smart enough to handle that much amount of load at a given instance of time. So that type of scaling which include enhancing the processor speed or including additional hardware is known as vertical scaling. And on the other hand, we have one more scaling that is horizontal scaling. So what horizontal scaling tells that we can distribute our total traffic into several computers or several servers so that the total amount of load get equally distributed among our servers so that at the time of huge traffic our application doesn't fail to execute because if our system fail to handle that much amount of traffic then the availability of the system will also go down so we need to handle the scalability factor in detail so that our application is always keep on run so let's discuss in detail the two type of scaling mechanism that we mostly use in industry for designing a system. So the first is horizontal scaling and the second is vertical scaling. So as I have already told you, horizontal scaling means that you can scale by adding more instances of server into your pool of resources. So if you see this picture, this is an example of horizontal scaling. So what we are doing over here so instead of enhancing the capability and the processor speed of the machine that we are doing in the vertical scaling, we are distributing our traffic into multiple number of servers using a load balancer. So this is where a load balancer comes in. So what it does is like, so for example, at a given time, we have 30,000 requests coming to our website. So the purpose of the load balancer is to distribute the traffic uniformly among all the server present over here so that none of the request fails and our application is always up and running. So this is basically the two type of scaling mechanism that we need to consider while designing a system. So now the question is which one should we implement at what scenario? So it is actually a difficult question to answer without knowing the behavior of the system. For example, if you have a limited number of customers, like you have a website that will be handled by internal college or something, then you can go for a vertical scaling because you know that the number of student or the number of user for that customer is restricted. So increasing the capability of the processor using our vertical scaling is appropriate for that case. But if you are dealing with a retail website or a huge website where the total number of customer is unknown and there is no predefined amount of requests at a given instant of time, then we should go with the horizontal scaling approach. Because at that time, based on the traffic volume, the request will get distributed among your servers so that your application always keep on running. So we will discuss about the horizontal and vertical scaling in some other video in detail where we will be discussing in detail that what are the type of database that support vertical scaling and what are the database supports horizontal scaling. So over there we will also discuss in detail the difference between the two. So if you want to know about the horizontal scaling and the vertical scaling and the difference between them, stay tuned for my upcoming videos that I will be uploading in this system design playlist. Now let's move to the next characteristic of the distributed system that you need to know is reliability of a distributed system. So by definition, reliability is the probability a system will fail in a given period. So in simple language, a distributed system is considered reliable if it gives delivery its essential services even when one or several of its software or hardware components fail. So a reliability is one of the main characteristics of the distributed system. So the most common example of a reliable system is for example, you are uploading a photo on Facebook. 
so it is expected by the user that at any point the photos that the user have uploaded should not get deleted at any point of time so even when there is any technical failure from facebook side for example the database crash or the server is not working even at that condition also the photo or the video that you have uploaded should not get corrupted or deleted so that is the real definition of reliability of the system means whatever the data the user is uploading to the server the system should retain that information till the time it wants to so there should not be any unexpected event that destroys the data so this is the real time example of reliability of a distributed system now the question is how we can achieve the reliability of a distributed system so the general approach to achieve the reliability of a system is to have a multiple copy or replication of the same data so we can have multiple number of data storage which are storing the same data as a replication of one another so that if one of the working database fails to execute during the execution process the second database that is working as a standby mode can work from that point so all the databases that are connected to the system are working in a master slave architecture which means if the master database fail then all the slave databases will come into execution so this is how we can achieve the reliability of a distributed system so i think you guys are clear with this two concept number 1 is the scalability and number 2 is the reliability because these two are the main key factor that you need to consider before implementing a system design so until now if you have liked the video please do like and share this video and if you are new to my channel please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview so let's move to the next characteristic of the distributed system that you need to know before designing a system is availability of a distributed system so as the name suggests availability is the time a system remains operational to perform its required activity in a specific period in simple language it is the measure of the percentage of time the system or the service remains operational under normal condition so the uptime of the website or the availability of the website is absolutely critical for the reputation and the functionality of the online businesses for some of the large retail companies being unavailable for even a single minute can result into a loss of millions of dollar so the availability is a key concept for any online business not only for the company revenue but also for customer satisfaction of the business because that is the driving tool for running any online business high availability in a distributed system requires a careful replication of the key components or the services of the business so that in case of failure if one of the services goes down another server or the services that is working in a standby mode can come into picture so there should be a proper system designing so that at any point of time system will remain available for most of the time according to wikipedia an ideal system should be available for 99.999% of the time which is called the five nines of system designing So the next key factor for designing a system is the efficiency of a distributed system. The efficiency of a distributed system are mainly measured by two parameter. Number 1 is the latency and number 2 is the bandwidth. So a latency is defined as the time required to transmit a message from one location to another within a distributed system. So this is actually a critical point that need to be considered while designing the system because in case of horizontal scaling since all the machines or the server are distributed on different places geographically so there will be a network latency within the system so we need to take that latency into consideration because the speed of the website affects usage as well as the user satisfaction not only that but also it will help in customer retention and also help in search engine ranking so the key factor of system design is we need to make our system that much efficient that there should be lower latency and faster response time of the website and the second important point for measuring the efficiency of a distributed system is the bandwidth so a bandwidth is the amount of the data that can be transferred per unit of time in a stable state So this is totally dependent on the hardware configuration of the system. So moreover, if we think from the designing prospect, we can increase the efficiency of the distributed system 
by writing optimized code so that we can reduce the processing time of each and every request, which will decrease the overall latency of the system. Now the last but not the least comes the manageability of our distributed system. So the manageability or the maintainability of our distributed system is the time or the speed required to repair or maintain a system. So if the time to repair a failed system increases, then obviously the availability of the system will decrease, which will result into the loss of business. So it is very important for early detection of the fault so that we can avoid and decrease the downtime of the system. So while designing the system, you have to keep the component as decoupled as possible so that it will help in faster recovery of the system. So these were the key characteristics of a distributed system that you need to consider while designing a system. So I hope you guys are clear with the concept of scalability, reliability, availability, efficiency and maintainability. So until now, if you have liked the video and if you have found this video useful, please do like and share this video. And if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my site and you are always ready for your next interview. So in my upcoming videos, I will be discussing the key concept of system designing those are required for designing a system. So keep waiting for my upcoming videos on system designing. See you on the next video. Thank you.